So good day, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Artifacts webinar. Uh, first, let me say that while all of us at Artifacts are, are working from the safety of our home offices, we very much appreciate you attending today, given the uh, extra time that everyone's spending on, on their computers and the disruptions to your everyday routines. Uh, so to begin, we're very pleased to be collaborating with British Blockchain Association to bring the blockchain into service for the JBBA, uh, its authors, and, uh, and its readership. I'm Dave Kachelko, and along with Jason Rollins, uh, we will be presenting today. Our agenda is to provide a, a brief orientation followed by a demonstration of our recently introduced public dashboard for the Journal of the British Blockchain Association, and then conclude by addressing uh, any and all of your questions. As for some housekeeping matters, uh, this webinar uh, is being recorded and you will receive an email with a link to the recording afterward. If you have any questions uh, along the way during the webinar, uh, please put them in the questions box and we will do our best to answer as many of them as possible at the end. You can bring up the chat panel by cl clicking on the uh, chat icon on your Zoom window. Should be along the bottom of your Zoom window, I believe. And if you have any audio issues or cannot see the presentation, please, please let us know uh, using the chat box. So let's begin with a, a bit of an orientation on why artifacts? We all know that research information comes in all types and sizes. Algorithms, computer code, data sets, experimental results, papers, preprints, etc. And that it grows by massive amounts daily. The problem is that most knowledge is not indexed, which means it can't be found, reused, or cited. And the inability to discover and credit the works of scientists and scholars both slows their career advancement and impedes the transfer of discoveries into societal benefits. To address this problem, the Artifacts platform provides a secure and a transparent mechanism for global registration and attribution of research. So what, what does Artifacts do? Well, Artifacts ensures researchers, their organizations, and publishers receive proper and formal credit for their work. We accomplish this by allowing scientists to do three fundamentally important things. First, to establish the provenance of their work products at any time by recording an immutable proof of existence onto the Bloxburg blockchain. Having already secured its provenance, researchers may share their research earlier in their own research processes and upon publication or post-publication. And thirdly, to give and receive formal citations, enabling researchers to give and receive citations in real time. Citations, the artifact system tabulates and reports that researchers may use to provide a complete record of their contributions, whether in funding applications, tenure assessments, or for career advancement. In this way, researchers are recognized for all their contributions. Now, publishers play an essential role in, in scholarly communications. And, and our collaboration with the JBBA enables its authors to provide a more comprehensive view of the research materials related to the findings and assertions in their own articles. Artifacts makes these works accessible, reusable, and citable by peers and colleagues in the author's discipline. We make these research materials accessible earlier during the discovery process, which is something that it's, that's entirely controlled by the creators of this research. So both earlier during the discovery process, upon publication, and throughout the life cycle of continuing research. Artifacts adds valuable content for the journal's subscribers and enables recognition for all of the research contributions 
by a journal's authors. So now let's hear from Jason, who will explain a bit more about our system and demonstrate how it works. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Dave. So we are going to highlight uh, just a few of the features that are sort of specific to to this JBBA partnership, although in reality they, they might be interesting maybe to anyone um, involved in, in scientific or academic research and the broader uh, scholarly publishing ecosystem. So just just maybe one or two quick slides here that I'll dive into a uh, streamlined demo. Again, I'm not going to highlight every single every single button, every workflow, every feature of the platform, but uh, just sort of things I think might be most relevant to get folks uh, from the JBBA community sort of jump started. But of course, anyone who has any other questions or comments, please just put those in the Q&A box and we will we'll do our best to address those. I think we will have really plenty of time in this uh, next 45 minutes or so or, or an hour perhaps to go through anything that anyone wants to talk about. So just here, what, uh, another couple of quick slides. So we have this stylized sort of system diagram here, just trying to highlight a little bit about how Artifacts is a contemporary you know, full stack web application that does many of the same things that many of the other websites that all of us do every day on the web. Of course, and then we also have this, this blockchain element. And the particular blockchain that we are using is a blockchain infrastructure created by an organization called Bloxburg. And Bloxburg is rapidly becoming sort of the, the blockchain distributed ledger of record specifically for scientific and academic research. And Bloxburg is actually a consortium of a growing number of 40 major research institutions from all around the world. And their goal really is to focus on providing this infrastructure very specifically in line with their mission of you know, education and, um, and scholarship and so forth. So all of that uh, history of these organizations certainly comes into play when we talk about, about Bloxburg. But they really want organizations like Artifacts to build applications on top of their infrastructure, which is exactly what we're, we're doing. So if anyone has questions about blockchain or Bloxburg, again, ask those in the, in the, in the chat. And we can, of course, point you over to all the formal documentation that Bloxburg has provided as, as well. Um, and you see we have a, just sort of a few notes at the bottom of the screen highlighting sort of the stakeholders, people we're trying to uh, provide benefit to with our, with our platform. Integration, of course, is key really to any successful tool. But for Artifacts as a small new startup, we're certainly not expecting to um, completely disrupt everything, but we actually want to work from within the, the processes that are, are serving researchers well now, and um, you know, partnering with, with publishers, with universities, and so forth. JBBA is a nice example of that. Uh, okay, so Dave, I think we just have one more slide quickly we wanna take a look at here. Right, so here's just a little bit of a preview. These, these are sort of the primary functions and some of the the core benefits and these benefits echo some of the language that, that Dave mentioned in the introduction here. So we're going to go through uh, signing up, logging into the platform, dashboards, sort of what an artifact is, the, the project workspaces, citations, and we'll actually look at a little bit of the details of the actual blockchain transactions to the Bloxburg network. Again, this is not the complete comprehensive set of everything that artifacts can do and benefit researchers, but again, just the highlights of what we think might be most interesting for, for new JBBA users. Um, okay, so now I'm going to switch over and actually share my screen during Zoom. There should not be too much of an inter interruption here. And I'm going to jump, jump around just a bit uh, simply because I have sort of things set up in different browsers and tabs. You certainly don't have to work this way. And if anyone uh, feels like I'm moving too quickly, just, just let me know and we can go back. 
So here is our, our login screen. Everyone's familiar with logging into web applications, so nothing really special here. If anything, I just really want to highlight that you have a, a bunch of options that make it easy to, to register and, and log in. No one likes having to retype. So, but you can use you know, all the basic choices here. Email, of course. And many of our research community have, have ORCID IDs. We can sign in ORCID. Google, LinkedIn, and this is sort of you know, potentially an ever-growing list of just easy you know, one or two clicks to log in. If there's something missing and you think we should include it, just let us know. We'll put it on the to-do list. So then what, once you're registered and you're in, you're going to come into a page that looks like looks like this. So hopefully everyone can see my screen saying welcome and my name and this is this welcome screen here where we're highlighting things like public dashboards artifacts which of course is our term really for any type of a record that's been been added to the system and this can be the metadata for a an article published in a in a journal to a, a research instrument that an individual researcher has added to one of their projects and, and shared publicly. So uh, while there's no completely comprehensive source, we're aiming to to pull into our database sort of the widest range of things that we think will be helpful to our users. And so we're starting to do that. We have, we have millions of items here. Again, millions of information about authors and, and profiles of, of folks who have created or connected accounts from uh, from ORCID and so forth here. Uh, the other thing I want to highlight is, is this idea of a, a dashboard. So essentially we have dashboards for individuals, we have dashboards for organizations, and we're highlighting the Journal of the British Blockchain Association here in this webinar, but this is also you know, a growing list. We're working with other other partners and publishers here. Also, highlight real quickly, we have uh, some help material here. Uh, getting getting started guides. We have YouTube channels with some videos. So th there's lots of other material here for folks getting started with the with the platform, we're not going to go through all of this, but just wanted to point it, that out that we have that as an additional resource. Um, so let me show you just real quickly dashboards. So I'll show you my own dashboard here. So a dashboard essentially counts up and and displays you know some of the key stats from um, both within and within our platform and, and data data that's, that we've imported into the platform through, through partnerships or through items that um, individual users have, have added. So this happens to be my personal, my personal dashboard. These are some of my artifacts. You can see that the system actually recommends new items that are associated with me when, when I first registered. And then my list of artifacts includes all kinds of things. In some cases, new files. This was a, an XML file I created just in, in preparing for this, for this webinar, but I also have items in here that have been published, and you know, you know, here are some, some patents and some papers that I've worked on with, with colleagues over the past few years. These are all, all included. Um, we really want to highlight this this dashboard for the JBBA, which we'll get to in just a moment here. So I think this is this is really nice. This is something that we feel feel proud about and we feel feel good about, since this is really the first um, publisher and journal specific dashboard that we've we've created. And what we've what we've tried to do here is we've tried to come up with a a visually pleasing summary of some of the key stats and information related to to the JBBA. Um, sort of maybe most notably and maybe most important is this idea of, of citations. And, and Dave set the stage for us in his introduction that what we, we have here, just at a quick glance, is a more complete view of citations to items related to the Journal of the British Blockchain Association. So 
The standard is, of course, to collect citations that accrue for individual authors and creators and to journals and publishers and organizations and so forth. The vast majority of those citations really are just to peer-reviewed published journal articles, which is fine. I mean, that seems to have served the academic and scientific community fairly well for quite a long time, although there are plenty of people that, that complain and suggest ways that that could be done better. We listen to them. And so what we're trying to do is present a more holistic picture of the types of articles types of items that can be cited and make sure that the folks that created those things get credit. So here, just real quickly, you can see that this 118, this additional citations, these essentially are citations that if someone went out on the web and looked at a lot of sources, they would find these citations. These are the existing citations to the published articles in the Journal of the British Blockchain Association. This, this additional, this received item, this is seven citations that have been given, given to authors and to artifacts other than, other than the articles. So this might be data sets and other supporting artifacts that have already been added into the artifacts platform. And then these numbers, of course, are available to share out to other, other partners so that everyone out there in the ecosystem can see and, and start to recognize the credit for the creators of these artifacts. So that's a highlight there. And I think that's really sort of the core of the value proposition of what we're trying to do with, with artifacts. We have some other basic information about the journal here. We have a couple of nice charts. Each of these charts sort of represents a slightly different view cutting through the data in the uh, in the platform, again, related to the journal. So here are some peer review articles. We have other, other types of articles that are in the journal. Here's a nice view of the you know, country affiliation, which is spread out pretty nicely all around the world, Asia Pacific, Europe, North America. Keywords, unsurprisingly here, blockchain is a particularly popular, popular keyword. Now, this, this chart here in the lower left is actually slightly different. So, so the other three charts all comprise real data, actually from information that's been added into the platform through our partnership with JBBA. This chart here is really just sample data. And, and what this, what we're hoping this is going to be is an enticement for members of the JBBA community to add additional files that once those files are added to the to the artifacts platform, which is very easy with just a few clicks. We will then run through and start to update this chart with, with the actual numbers of things like audio and visual files, research instruments, data sets, and so forth. So let's take a little bit of a closer look about how, how JBBA related authors and editors and so forth could do this. So I'm gonna jump over to the, another key section of the platform, which is what we call projects. I have a tab open here for projects. And this view now is a list of the projects that I've created. Any artifacts user can log in real quickly. They can create any type of project they want. They can keep it private. They can make it public. They can invite collaborators and so forth uh, for almost any type of a project, any, any discipline, any topic. So a project is essentially just a way to organize some work by yourself or with people. You can think of it as, as a folder with other folders in, inside of it. A project space may simply be a workspace that you use for yourself while you're thinking about developing a presentation. It may turn into a collaborative project that ultimately you know, some of your collaborators use to, to share a draft and then, then eventually publish a peer-reviewed journal article. Completely flexible, completely up to, to any of you to use, use how you like. And you can see my list here. Some of these things are just you know, test projects. Dave and I are working together with our, with our engineering team to test out new features. In many other cases, these are actual real projects that we have, that we have created with, with partners and we have 
we have used um, as as a workspace to you know, to leverage the artifacts platform, and in, you know in many cases these things that have actually resulted in um, some really nice collaborations. But I'm I'm just going to highlight a couple. So probably most relevant to our group here is this project that we've gone ahead in and created for members of the JBBA community. So what we've done here is we again we've created a project, we've added some some basic information with some helpful links. We have added components, and again, you can almost think of the components as sort of nested folders within the larger project. Um, there, we've added a few project, a few documents here, just really as as samples, again, to help make it easier to get get folks sort of jump started on. Um, taking advantage of the features and the value of artifacts. And I think probably most representative is this. So one of the authors from a JBB art article ha had actually provided uh, an XML data set. So this is a digital data set they used along with some other material to create, you know, and part of the research that resulted in their, um, their published article. So again, the core value proposition that, that we believe is, is helpful for, for the research community and that Artifacts is focusing on is helping to both protect these, these types of files, make them more findable and citable, and actually then count up those citations and make sure that the creators get credit for those, those citations. So this is just, this is an actual file, and we would love for other members of the JBBA community to add similar files like this, they will then be able to see these files starting to be counted up and shown on this, this journal. Folks will be able to, to find those materials, build on them, cite them, and then both the creators of those files and you know, collectively the journal will start to see those citation counts increase. So that, that's sort of the real call to action that we believe will be, will be valuable and hopefully enticing and interesting for JBBA authors. So we're looking forward to seeing folks dive in and take advantage of that. And again, it, it's really as simple as going into this project. We're going to send out uh, invitations to, to all the authors and, and members of the JBBA community. We actually have this is private now, and what that means is just simply only the contributors and the members who've been invited. But at some point, we think it would make perfect sense for either the seam, the editor, or, or other members of the community to decide, okay, we want to make this public now so other people can actually see these additional files and start start citing them. Uh, but we're going to leave that to, to the JBBA authors and editors to make that decision. Let me just highlight one other thing here while we're in these in these projects. I'm going to go to to a different sample project that I've created for psychology. I think psychology and social science in general are great examples of large disciplines where there are many different types of research artifacts that are created that justifiably could and, and probably should be cited directly. But until we came up with the artifacts platform, there's just no reasonable way to do that. So switching topics a little bit away from JBBA here, but I, I, I still think this will be relevant to, to everyone listening in. So essentially what I've done is I've created this sample project, talked a little bit about you know, what we hope to do with the, with the artifacts here. I've added a few artifacts that I've started a draft paper. I've added a data set. I've collected a few other things that sort of as background and I've actually created this little chart. So again, Dave and I are contributors, contributors to this chart. We very likely will use this chart in a published paper at some, at some point, maybe in a presentation, but we've added it here as an artifact because we feel that it's valuable and we've put some, some effort and thought into it. And we would certainly like other psychology researchers to be able to to build on and cite this this chart on its own. Another detail here I want to get into. If you re remember at the beginning, Dave said 
All right, so one of our fundamental value propositions is to help folks secure the provenance and to sort of protect and timestamp their intellectual property. And the way we do that is, again, through this blockchain inter integration with the Blocksburg, Blocksburg infrastructure. And so the specific mechanism, and this, is, they get, this gets a little bit jargony here. This is something that I think certainly blockchain folks and early adopters are pretty interested in. Every user of artifacts doesn't necessarily have to pay attention to this, but we'll just highlight it quickly here because I, I think it's a little interesting. So we have what's called a transaction hash. So what I, this is my file. When I initially uploaded it into my project, I click this button. So it's proof of existence. Again, a little bit more jargon. Essentially that says, okay, take the metadata from this file, do a transaction to the Blocksburg blockchain. So, and then that, take, that takes usually a few seconds. I've done that already for this. So now we've linked over to, to the Blocksburg infrastructure. So essentially the transaction from our artifacts web application, we've sent information via an API directly to Blocksburg. And now Blocksburg, they have all their own technology and their own system that sort of ver verifies that artifacts and these users are allowed to make these transactions. They do all kinds of things where they reconcile across the different nodes in their network. And you come up with what's called a transaction details. Now some of this looks really, really technical and, and pretty dense and I, I realize that. And so again, no one needs to be an expert or understand what all these numbers and, and letters mean in order to benefit from artifacts. And just for the purposes of the webinar, we'll highlight some of this. But I, I think probably what's, what's most interesting and most relevant is that we actually transact some of this metadata from artifacts, so from the file that, that Dave and I had created or any of you that are uploading or creating things on your own. We purposely add in some metadata that is humanly re readable. And again, this is for the benefit of making this information more discoverable so that other users, again, can build on this work and ideally cite and help, help Dave and I get credit and, and build our, our reputations. So that's why our names are in here. And maybe even most importantly, we put in some very specific keywords that, are, that will then be indexed and, and searchable. And that's, so that's the connection between the traditional scholarly metadata for really any kind of digital scholarly output. And here it is sort of permanently stored into the blockchain. Okay, so that's, the, and again, there, there's plenty of more information you can get directly from Blocksburg. If anyone has questions, they can you know, just send us a quick note, easy to get in touch with us by email or website, Twitter, any of that kind of thing. And we can more happy to answer any questions or we can point you to more, more of the technical information about Blocksburg. But again, I want to emphasize, no one needs to be a blockchain expert to take advantage of the, the power of how we have this integrated into artifacts. Just, just highlighting here as sort of a little bit of additional education. So. If I go, go back to the, the main platform, we were doing a webinar just last night and we had a couple questions about how information actually gets into the system. So I think that's probably a reasonable topic to, to touch on just a little bit here. I'll, I'll do that quickly. So again, using the example of the, the Journal of the British Blockchain Association, but really this could apply to any of the artifacts in the platform or anything that any of you uh, who are enticed to, to try out the system might want to add. So essentially, this material is added either through you know, partnerships where we ingest metadata from journals or from uh, you know, research organizations or you know, via API, all, all that kind of stuff. And what we have then is we have these metadata records. I picked this one because this is an example. In the seam is the editor-in-chief of the JBBA journal. He's been using the platform. This particular artifact is a PDF. This is the um, complete journal, issue one, volume two. He added this since he's the, you know, he's one of the authors of this. 
He did his transaction to Bloxburg that we just showed. He has uh, a link to this within the system. And you can see he has already has some, some citations related to this, to this artifact this artifact. So I think this is, uh, this is a pretty nice example. And you can, any of these artifacts, this ever-growing list of, of millions of items in here, of course, just like most platforms, you can readily search here by, you know, by, uh, by topics, by authors, and, uh, and so forth, and you'll get, you'll get some search results. So let me let me pause there, Dave. Anything else you think I should uh, make sure that we highlight here? Or should we go and see if we have any any questions from our participants? Do we want to go back to any other concluding slides? Yes. So great overview. Thanks, Jason. Um, let me look over the question. While I'm looking over the questions here, um, perhaps you could show the um, how this uh, how this dashboard is represented in the JBBA uh, in their content website that's hosted by Scholastica. I can do that, you're right. I think I will go. So if I go back into the, to the dashboard here, this is all artifact stuff. We have a link over to Scholastica, which is a commercial provider of um, you know, software platform, JBBA is one of the journals that they host both for their article submission process and, and as well for the actual published articles. Um, and this is where you can, you can save the, any, anyone can save the article, you know, the PDF, they can get the, the citation information and so forth. Um, they have added in this link about blockchain metadata. So this is just another publicly available source where you can get information here about the partnership and then of course about about artifacts. Now again for the the title and the purpose of this this webinar we happen to be focusing on JBBA but almost everything we're talking about here could be generalized out to any author or aspiring author or editor or representative of a, a university or or a publisher and you know, we're talking and working with many other folks to have these sort of custom integrations, but some information here, some links to, you know, into the, the dashboard and the projects, getting started guides, some of these things we've already shown, but this is just another very convenient way, certainly for existing members of the JBBA community who are familiar with the Scholastica platform to go in and, and find all of this information. Great, thanks for thanks for bringing that up. So, a couple of questions here. Um, so, here's here's uh, the first one. Uh, the uh, having already published in JBBA, are you saying that all I need to do is to associate any of my associated or affiliated work files with? my published article in JBBA, that those then become citable, uh, ac accessible and citable items. Is that correct? That's the question. Yes, that's exactly right. So again, back into the artifact system, this is the, what we're calling the projects portion of the, the platform. We're going into this project that we have created specifically for the JBBA community. Um, this is this is something that we're going to send out uh, along with the JBBA journal. We're going to we're going to send out invitations to everyone. So it's, if if they want to give it a try, they can simply you know click on a link in their email. And they can come into this platform. And so for any of the authors, I, I suppose for editors as well, you you can simply add in any additional files that you like. Ideally, these would be associated with your already published article, but there's certainly room to, to create new, new components and new folders that uh, you know, others could, could build on. But I, I think the most representative example, again, is this file, which is this XML 
data file, right? So this was something that the journal added just as an example because it is something that is 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 a real supporting artifact that goes along with one of the published articles. But ideally, we would again we would love for other authors who have published in the JBBA to to do things similar to this to upload these files and to make them public so other researchers can build on them directly and then you can start accruing citations that individual authors will of course see on their dashboards but then we will also start to see these counts here and types of supporting artifacts these numbers will will no longer just be sample data but they will be real data and they will start to reflect a more complete view of all the data artifacts that are associated with the journal. Now we happen to have picked things like data sets, code, audiovisual files, research instruments, and so forth. Again, these are just representative samples, so you don't have to be limited to this. If there's something else that someone has created as part of their research process, building up to the publication in the journal, add those, and as our system will then update this list to include really anything that's that the authors have added that it that's relevant and again the citations then will start to show up both on the jbba journal dashboard and again on the dashboard of the individual um, individual authors both artifacts citations that have been received of course and even a tra keeping track of the actual citations that that you as an, as an author and a contributor have given to others. So again, a much more complete picture of the citation view will be enabled by by adding these um, these additional artifacts. If we go back over to the project section, one other thing I'll highlight highlight for us real quickly since we have the time. So again, back into the JBBA community. And of course you see my name here just simply because I work with artifacts and I've created this for you guys. It's I'm not, um, you know, the contributor list will get much, much longer with the actual, all the names of the actual authors who come in and use, use the platform. But um, so these couple of example files here we have things like PDFs, and we've shown this XML file a few times. We provide what's called artifact storage, simple drag and drop of these files, and um, easy convenience, you don't have to do anything special here. But if you already have your digital files stored somewhere else, with, which many of us do, we have integrations with all kinds of other tools. Some of these are really very technical, related to you know, computer code on GitHub and so forth. But you know, many of us have just any kind of file that we store in places like, like Dropbox. Maybe we have a Mendeley account, or many of us have you know, Google Drive accounts. So if you already have these files stored somewhere else, with the matter of a few clicks, you can integrate those with, with artifacts. And artifacts then knows to look for that file stored on your existing cloud storage system. Um, and it's, it's as simple as that. Very good. Um, here's another, this is really more of a comment, um, but uh, let, me, let me read this. I'm currently preparing a manuscript I plan to submit to JBBA. So I should start using artifacts now. Uh, sure, yes. I mean, this is probably even the best time actually to do that because, so you could either, um, you could either create a new component for yourself within this JBBA community, or, or maybe you just want to start by creating your own project, which you can keep keep private. Um, again, this I'll go back to this sample project because I think this is a nice nice example. Um, this is a this is a private project, and Dave and I have created this, you know, really just to be able to illustrate in cases like this. So again, we have a draft of, of a paper and 
we have added that in here to our private project. We've transacted this to the blockchain, so we have that provenance uh, sort of protection and that, that digital trail enabled by, by the Bloxburg integration. And then we, we've, we've included all of these constituent components that we are going to be using as inputs into what ultimately will be a draft that we will then submit to perhaps to a journal someday. So I think this is exactly analogous to what, you know, any potential author who's working on a draft start. If you're curious about artifacts, now is really the best time to start this. You will keep everything private and everything will be enhanced by the integration with, with the, the blockchain, you only make it public so others can see your files when you're ready to. But certainly, if you are working on a draft paper, you submit that, it gets accepted. I would say that's almost the optimal time to then make everything public so you can start ideally to accrue citations for your preprint and for any of the other things, the data sets, any of these other instruments or other other you know, individual artifacts that you feel s could deserve to be reused and built on and cited directly. And so your citation numbers will then start to increase and you'll get those well before having to wait for the, the actual paper to be, um, to be published. And again, it's going to give a much more complete picture of the actual citation activity related to your research work. So it's one thing, there, there are plenty of tools out there that know how to count citations to the very top journals. But, you know, as Dave pointed out in the introduction, that's really only the tiniest little slice of the actual work that folks put into research in all kinds of different fields. And most of that work is supported by taxpayer grant money. So, so really the, the current system of just looking at citations to a few well-known journals doesn't really give proper credit to all the real work that's done by researchers that's you know that's supported by by taxpayer and, and foundation grant money uh, and we certainly feel and many of the users of the artifacts platform agree that it's time to to improve that and be able to give a more complete and just faster and also safer view of, of citations at the individual researcher level and again have that reflected in dashboards and views of you know collectively at the at the journal level great thanks jason uh we checking for questions here the i think we have we've covered everything that's been asked there are a couple of variations of of what you've just uh, addressed um let me bring up one final slide yeah i'll stop sharing it i'll All hand right. the communication back over to you dave and uh, let me just bring uh this uh summary uh slide with our contacts uh and additional resources so uh we'd ask everyone to just please make a note of our contact information and and feel free to reach out to any of us uh for additional information uh, whether it's uh, Emma, uh, Jason, or myself. Um, we encourage researchers, authors, and reviewers, and editors to sign up today to begin receiving credit for all their works. And as Jason's pointed out, that, that's certainly a relevant activity, not only for uh, authors that have already been published uh, by JBBA, but uh, those who, who are either currently working on manuscripts to submit uh, or contemplating that. And, and may do so in the future. So you may all follow us uh, at artifacts.ai and, and uh, in social media. Uh, you'll find video resources on our YouTube channel and so forth. Uh, so we very much look forward to watching your research footprint grow and, uh, and seeing all of your contributions in your specific areas of, of expertise and discipline. So with that, uh, Jason and I would like to conclude today's webinar. Again, thank you for, for your time and attention today. Have a good and safe weekend. Thank you and goodbye.